What started with a rattle can ends today with a beefed up small block Ford in an ultra modern hot rod package. One lucky viewer will win. We teamed up with Factory 5 and Duplicolor to create a 33 Ford component car we're calling the Rattle Can Rod, and it's being given away. It started with a tubular chassis and a fiberglass body we covered in Duplicolor's paint shop finish system. Now we mocked up the essentials with a pie air dummy block to make sure we had plenty of room. And today that's getting replaced with this re-engineered Roller 302 long block we ordered from Powertrain Products. Now this is a 5 liter Mustang engine that's been completely gone through and it's factory rated at 225 horsepower, which is fine to leave alone, but better yet, it's a great starting point to make a little more power. We're going to be adding our own little twist to this by putting in a slightly more aggressive camshaft and converting the heads to stud mount rockers, all courtesy of Crane Cams. Induction will be from this dual four barrel intake from Edelbrock along with two 500 CFM carburetors. Lighting it all off will be Petronics Ignition with E3 spark plugs and all the bells and whistles to finish this thing off are courtesy of Summit Racing. We'll start by removing the factory stamped steel rocker arms. These have no adjustment and align themselves using the fulcrum so there's no guide plate here. Here's a quick tip. When you start removing the rockers, start at TDC on the compression stroke on number one. We're taking them off in the firing order so there is no load on the push rod. Turning the crank 90 degrees each time will ensure the next rockers are removed at TDC themselves. Now the 5 16 push rods can be removed. They may get reused depending on their length. In the valley, the lifter retainer can be freed up, which allows the lifter guide to be removed, followed by the stock roller lifters, which will pull up and leave in the block. Up front, the double row timing chain set comes off and will get reused. This gets us one step closer to removing the cam. Now two fasteners are removed to free up the camshaft retaining plate and the cam can get removed. Just like when you install a cam, be careful removing one. Nicking the cam bearings with the lobes or the journal will tighten up the new cam in the bore and lead to a cam bearing failure. Our new stick is a Crane Cam's Powermax hydraulic roller. Now it fits 85 and up Ford and Mercury small block V8s because they were roller engines from the factory. The intake has 214 degrees of duration and the exhaust is 220. Lift at the valve is 482 on the intake and 497 on the exhaust using a 1.6 rocker arm. The lobe separation angle is 112 degrees, which will give this little 302 a nice smooth idle. The same retaining plate will hold the new cam in the block as well. Now the timing set is aligned with the crankshaft keyway and the camshaft is pressed on by hand. Like every other engine that's assembled here, we'll check the cam's position by degreeing it to ensure what's on the cam card is accurate. And it is. Normally on engines designed for fuel injection, you don't see this. It's an eccentric to run a mechanical fuel pump. It's offset to act as a lobe. We'll show you the rest in just a few. The next order of business is getting the tins ready to go on. Now we're removing the shiny finish on all the parts in our blasted all cabinet. This will give them a rougher texture, which gives the paint a good surface to adhere to. And with a project name of Rattle Can Rod, you know where we're headed. The first coat going on is Duplicolor's silver textured metallic. It has superior metal and plastic adhesion, is fast drying, and easy to apply. Now a thin first coat, followed up by a heavier second coat, gives excellent coverage. To protect that finish, VHT Satin Clear will lay on top of it. It's chip resistant and rated to handle temps up to 2,000 degrees. Back in the shop, we're using some tins we had in our parts room to cover the engine's internals so we can paint the block and heads. First, with engine enamel primer with ceramic. It's oil and gas resistant, making it ideal for this type of application. It withstands temps up to 500 degrees, well beyond an engine's failure point. It's getting Duplicolor's engine enamel with ceramic.
keeping with the silver look of the tins, this is cast coat aluminum. After it's dry, we'll remove the valve covers and tape to continue the build. By dropping the roller lifters back in their bores, followed by the lifter guides. Now the sprung retainer is bolted back down to secure it all, which allows us to roll the engine over to finish up the bottom end. That includes this Ford Racing standard volume oil pump that's held in place with ARP fasteners. The pickup attaches to the pump and it's designed to work with front sump pans. Like this Cal Customs Fend Aluminum 5 quart pan. Now fasteners from our ARP accessory kit will snug it down. Next, the chassis meets its mate. Back again so soon. That's right. Great to see you guys. How Thanks you doing? Man. Good, man. Good. Engine's looking great. Can you tell me a little bit more about what you did? Well, Mark from Duplicolor is back with us for part two to add some more of his rattle can touch. Today we're going to be working on valve covers and we're going to be using our VHT Wrinkle Plus in a blue. It's a really bright color, so it really will accent the engine. The wrinkle finish is kind of a tie back to the older days. It's a nice wrinkle. It's kind of an OEM look that was there in the past. So it's just a really durable, nice textured coating that uh, is also heat resistant up to 350 degrees. It takes a little longer to dry. To, so to help expedite that process and get it back to Mike and Pat, we're going to use a heat gun to accelerate it. Without the heat gun, you could let it dry in the sun, but it may take a couple hours. Probably like right here, you probably see a good bit of the wrinkle happening right now. But that looks really good. And while our painted valve covers are drying, Mike and I are continuing on the engine assembly. Crane Cam sent us a rocker arm stud conversion kit so we can run an adjustable rocker arm on this cylinder head. Start by placing two guide plates in the supplied channel. Two studs can go in to secure them. They're torqued using a poly lock and nut from the kit to 25 foot pounds. We do need a longer push rod for this setup. Lucky for us, these comp cams 6600 long were sitting in our parts room. Now the 1.6 ratio crane gold rockers can drop on the 3.8 studs. Now they have precision needle bearing fulcrums for reduced friction, slotted bodies for extra stud clearance, and are made from extruded billet aluminum for strength and longevity. Lash is half turn past zero. With Edelbrock intake gaskets laid down, along with Loctite silicone on the china rails, we'll seal the valley with this Edelbrock F28 dual plane, dual quad intake manifold. It has an operating range from 1500 to 6500 RPM and it's designed to work with Edelbrock or Carter carbs. This Summit Racing Pro Street Balancer is the last part to go on the engine before we pull it off the stand. We'll tape up the intake plenum to prevent anything from getting into it. And while our painted valve covers are drying, we'll use our mock-up ones to protect the valve train. And might as well bolt up the Factory 5 urethane engine mounts. Our engine sling is from Pit Pal and is rated to 1,000 pounds. We'll attach it to the front and rear exhaust ports to keep the engine somewhat level. Out back, we can bolt up the flex plate because this hot rod is getting an AOD. Jim and Tony from Factory 5 are back. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. How are you? And just in time to help with the transmission. It came from Powertrain Products, just like our long block. It's been fully remanned and dyno tested to simulate driving conditions and load in every gear. Making the connection between the two is a B&M converter with a 3,000 RPM stall. That may seem high, but don't question it. The Factory 5 guys have done their homework and know what works with their lightweight hot rod. Once mated, I'm good on the set. ARP fasteners go through the bell housing to secure it to the block. And underneath, we can align the converter with the flex plate and tighten the nuts. All right. Installing the speedometer sending unit should happen now, otherwise it can be a tight fit once the trans is in. We can also tighten the trans mount at this time. Since it's all being dropped in the car together, we need to remove the front grille and radiator as an assembly to have a clear path to its new resting place. Here we go. The time to unite this drivetrain with a modernized hot rod is here. Having several hands is a good idea. We don't want to scratch the chassis or firewall. Okay. It will just add more work if you have to do repairs. 
So don't rush, and the end result will be gratifying. I'm good. With the mount studs aligned, we can lower the engine until it rests on the chassis pads and start the nuts. Midway back, the urethane trans mount can be secured. And the final link for the drivetrain is this drive shaft that's supplied from Factory 5. It'll slide into the tail housing first, then bolt to the pinion flange out back. Next, dual carbs are twice as nice, and later the shakedown. We're still thrashing to get this 33 hot rod fired up before we head home today. That seat belt mounts It's a build that's bringing us all a lot of excitement. Duplicolor is playing a big part too. Rattle Can Rod sports all their paint, including their VHT flame proof line on our JBA headers. We're gonna use a cast iron look, so it'll be a really kind of cool look there, not just your standard black, but it'll be really heat resistant and extremely durable. It's rated from 1300 to 2000 degrees intermittent heat, and that's really great for the headers since they get hotter, but this is a very high temperature coating and true to that VHT name. AutoZone supplied the components we need to power the car, start the engine, and supply fuel to the carburetors. Now the reason we went this route is simple logic. We want this car driven and used when one of you win it in the sweepstakes. So if there happens to be a failure with one of these parts, there are over 5,200 AutoZone stores where you can drop in and get a replacement and keep on trucking. To prevent galling during fire up, we'll place a small amount of high pressure lube on the fuel pump arm. This is where it rides on the cami centric. Now it can bolt to the block. This is a Duralast Gold Series starter that's built with 100% new parts, not remanufactured. Torque output meets or exceeds factory equipment, and the solenoid is built onto the unit. To cool the engine, a cast iron water pump will bolt to the timing cover, followed by a pulley from our Ford Racing Power Pulley Kit. Keeping the voltage supplied to the battery is a Tough Stuff one-wire alternator wrapping up the front drive. Tony's finishing up the trunk and dropping in an AGM Platinum battery that pumps out 750 cold cranking amps. It's leak and spill proof for maintenance free power and has a three year free replacement warranty. Back up front and to secure the carburetors, eight carb studs from ARP, followed by the gaskets, the 500 CFM carb with electric choke, and the secondary carb, which is also 500 CFM. And to make the link from your foot to the throttle blades, Tony is installing the throttle cable. Linking the carb's fuel inlets is an Edelbrock dual quad fuel line kit. Our belt showed up, so it's being installed and the tension is being set. To keep rattle can rod old school cool, we decided to add a bit of nostalgia by putting on a dual four barrel setup from Summit Racing and Edelbrock. Now it comes with Edelbrock's F28 vintage style manifold and it's topped with two 500 CFM carburetors. Now don't let the carburetor size fool you, this is a dyno tuned operation that has great idle and cruising characteristics. And the cherry on top is this dual air filter assembly that Mark from Duplicolor prettied up a bit. A single dash six line will run from the pump to the dual quad inlet. This line only sees about five and a half PSI, so this is overkill. Pertronics supplied the ignition for this build. The coil is a flamethrower three canister type that produces 45,000 volts. Wiring is super simple. The starter connections are pre-terminated and with access this easy, it can't get any better to hook up. Now our Pertronics distributor can go in. It's their flamethrower with vacuum advance and ready to run right out of the box. Supplying the spark to the combustion chamber are E3 Diamond Fire spark plugs. Coming up, the boys shoot on a little accent, then button up the bucket for a little pavement pounding. <laughs> We are back and in the home stretch of our rattle can rod project, about to give it another splash of color. We've got the car masked off. What we're going to do is we're going to put a nice blue stripe with Duplicolo single stage paint on the side of the car just to give that car a little bit more pizzazz to it because it's just a black, flat black car. I'm using Duplicolo's paint shop finish system, Midnight Blue. And the nice thing is it's ready to go right out of the can. No mixing, no reducing, ready to spray. I'll do three light coats. Should give this thing a nice suitable accent. All right. 
That's a brand new car right there. That's awesome. Mounting back on the front of the car is the radiator and grill combo. So these things gotta go all the way down. Jim and Tony are sliding on the couplers to make way for the final connection from the radiator to the engine, which is done using steel radiator flex hose. We're moving the car to the lift so we can knock out the trans cooler lines, exhaust, and a few small things. Now that we have access, two dash six lines will make the loop from the radiator to the transmission so it stays cool as well. The lower radiator hose is ran and the final connections for the cooling system are done. Tony and Jim will run the pre-made exhaust that's supplied with the car. It's all stainless steel and has a two and a half inch diameter. The tips exit at the rear and are polished. All our lubricants came from AutoZone, including this coastal gear oil. We're adding friction modifier to reduce the chatter and clutch noise in the limited slip differential. Back on the ground, our jazzed up valve covers can be installed along with a 1-200 spacer which allows them to clear the roller rocker arms, followed by the sporty little breathers. We're going racing technology when it comes to coolant for our 33. Now this is Evan's high performance waterless engine coolant. Now every other coolant on the market today has some percentage of water in it. And we all know water can lead to corrosion, electrolysis, and overheating. Evans prevents all of the above because there's absolutely no water in it. Now it's designed for all gas and light duty diesel engines and has a boiling point of 375 degrees with antifreeze properties below minus 40. And best of all, it protects for the life of the engine, which means you buy coolant once and never have to change it again. Now that's cool. If you're changing over to this stuff, you first have to drain and purge all your traditional coolant before adding Evans Waterless. But since Rattle Can Rod sports a fresh engine and rad, we just have to pour it in. Pat took care of the spark plug wires, also from Pertronics. It's going to be a nice running, nice driving, easy cruising. Uh, I, I can't wait to hear it run. And if I could rig this to be mine, I would, because I, I really like it. It's a, it's a neat car. And, uh, uh, it's very inspiring. I'd like to maybe build one of these in my own one day, that's for sure. We're filling the engine with AutoZone's 10W30 synthetic blend motor oil. This setup takes six quarts and we'll light her off with 87 octane gas. It's been a long week. With everything finished up, the turn of the key will let us know how we did. Are right, you guys ready? Yeah, light it. Six fifty-five, 60 Yep, not bad. Nice job, man. Always nice when they run. Very cool. This is what it's all about, man. Hitting that key and having this. Man, wow! Thank you, guys. Oh, turn out. Yeah, great. it's awesome. You good? good build. Good build. Well, there you have it. You have a car that has a super responsive engine. It handles like a go-kart, and it'll stop on a dime and give you eight cents change. And those are the perfect ingredients <laughs> for a sweepstakes car. Somebody's going to be a lucky winner.